We'll explore the color purple in a show that features delicious lavender ice cream and some gorgeous purple flowers. That's all coming up in 30 seconds. Smith, welcome to the show. I wish you could smell this lavender. It is so aromatic. It smells so, so fresh and clean. Some friends of mine from the Bonnie Doon Lavender Farm sent it to me. It's really great stuff. You know, I love lavender, both the plant and the color. Lavender as a color is in the cool family of colors, such as blue and purple. And in today's show, we're going to explore our passions for the color purple. Have you noticed the popularity of all natural beauty products that you can find these days? Well, it's really kind of hard not to. There's such a wide array of fragrances to be found. We'll visit a shop that specializes in custom potions designed around botanicals like what else? Lavender. And this is a dish I've wanted to bring to you for years. I first tried lavender ice cream in California and recently found a chef who agreed to share his recipe with us. Now, people often ask me, Alan, what is your favorite flower? And I usually say, well, it just happens to be whatever's blooming in my garden at any given time. I tend to like them all. But I thought what we would do is look back over the past few growing seasons and maybe check out some of the best blue and purple varieties. You see, this show is all about purple. So if you love that color theme, you're in for a real treat. So stick around and visit this grand English estate up next. Welcome back. Today we're talking about the color purple. You know, as a student of garden history and design in England, I had some incredible opportunities to visit some of the finest gardens in the United Kingdom. This garden, Chatsworth, really stood out. Now I have to say, I was very impressed with some of the color themes that are laid out in the gardens. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. If you want to make an area look much larger or expansive, you'll want to use a color that matches the sky a cool color, like blue. If you want to make a garden feel smaller or create a sense of shortened distance, use a warm, bright color like red. Color also has the ability to affect our moods. You see, those cool colors, the blues, lavenders, and grays, can actually make us feel cool, restful, whereas the hot colors can energize us, make us feel warmer. Take, for instance, this perennial herbaceous border. It is indeed a hot border. The color scheme is very warm. It starts with bright reds and works its way through orange, golden yellows to bright yellow. Even some of the plant names evoke a hot place. For instance, this crocosmia is called Lucifer. Now, if you look at the opposite side of the color wheel into the cool range of colors, well, these can have quite a different effect on us. Now, for me personally, I tend to gravitate toward a cooler color palette. Maybe it is because it makes me feel more restful, relaxed. And quite frankly, I must have a thing for the color blue. Just look at some of the plant combinations in this cool border. Agapanthus contrasted with baby's breath, the spiny sea holly next to the blooms of monkshood. Then there's Veronica, lavender, all set off by drifts of white that make the whole color scheme sparkle. When you see beautiful herbaceous borders like these, no matter the color scheme, you realize that garden design is indeed a fine art. Now speaking of fine art, I want to show you one more gorgeous garden that truly uses the color purple in some amazing ways. When I arrived at Bonnie Doon Farm, I was swept away by the fields and fields of hazy purple that seemed to surround the craftsman style home of Gary and Diane Meehan. Gary gave me a tour and we talked about what else? Lavender, of course. Now, Gary, I know you all did a lot of research and, and you've actually done your own crosses here to find yes. the best lavenders for, for Bonnie Doon. Yes, we have. H how do you recommend the average uh, home gardener um, find the best lavender for their space? I recommend that they take a look at their offerings of the local garden centers closest to their homes. And these people have gone to a great trouble to have the varieties that are acclimatized to their area. 
Gary, is there a variety of lavender that you would recommend to the beginning gardener? Absolutely, I'd recommend Provencal over any other variety because of the beautiful color, it, the traditional look it has. It's done very well for me this year. I had a bumper crop. <laughs> Same with us. Uh, Provencal must be the most vigorous plant of all of them. It has the nicest characteristics, truly, when you compare it to all. Now, you grow a number of different varieties of lavender here. Which are some of your favorites? I'd have to say my very favorite is the Angustifolia that I believe is still the sweetest of all, maybe with a close second of the Provencal. Now, some of these lavenders have more aromatic oils in them than others. Very true. Which of the varieties have better oils? I would say uh, as far as the, the sweetness, you can always depend on Angustifolia. That's the variety of lavender that I like to see people cook with. It's the sweetest of oils and uh, uh, still enough color to suit most people. Now a little later in the show, we'll put lavender to work in the kitchen. But first, pampering yourself with botanicals. Back with more right after this. The color of purple is taking center stage today, in particular lavender. If you've been into a boutique skincare shop lately, then you can't help but notice all the products using natural ingredients like lavender oil. We stopped by the Bath Junkie and met owner Pat Schweitzer, who shows us how she prepares lavender bath salts. Today we're going to be making a wonderful bath crystal with the essential oil lavender. You know, lavender has wonderful healing properties we've known for centuries that it's been used to treat. Um, for stress and as a calming remedy. So our bubbling bath crystals um, that we're gonna make today are gonna have the essential oil lavender, bergamot, and mandarin orange. And we also have the option of making this the color lavender for our uh, bubbling bath crystals today. So we're gonna add our uh, color right now. Now we're gonna lightly set the color into our product. And then we're gonna be adding our essential oils, uh, the lavender. This is our silky all over body wash. It's extremely moisturizing and our silver screen bubble bath. The customer has the option of creating their own fragrance and picking a color and we custom blend it for them. So we're just gonna mix up our bath crystals now. These are wonderful for soaking and the lavender again has wonderful healing and soothing properties. This is gonna detoxify your skin and have a wonderful bath experience just soaking in these. So now we have some wonderful bubbling bath crystals with the fragrance lavender, bergamot, mandarin, orange, and the fragrance combination is called Liquid Valium. It's a big hit among bath junkie lovers, so it's wonderful for soaking and relaxing, and I highly recommend it. Up next, I'll show you how to grow lavender in containers and tell you about some of the plants in the purple family that have been outstanding performers in my garden. So stick around. There's more on these purple passions right after this. Here's one more idea for getting color in the garden. What makes this petunia truly spectacular is not only the bubblegum pink color of its blooms, but the size and vigor of the plant. The plants are nearly two feet or more in height and can fill a landscape bed quickly with a bright punch of color. Supertunia Vista Bubblegum is a petunia that's self-cleaning, so there's not a lot of withered and spent blooms to distract from your display. More colorful plants can be found at pllandsmith.com. Welcome back. Today's show is all about the color purple and its derivatives, such as lavender. We're also talking about the plant, one of my favorites. But if you've ever tried to grow it, you know you have to get the soil just right. It can be a little fussy. That's why growing them in containers is really one of the best ways I grow lavender. Let me show you. First of all, notice the drainage holes in this container. This is very important. I'll tell you, lavender does not like wet feet. Soggy soils will kill it in a minute. The other thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the pot isn't too large. You can actually grow beautiful lavender in a small to medium-sized container like this. You see, lavender is a Mediterranean herb. And the soil mix has to be, I think, really light and not too rich. That's why I like to follow a very simple recipe, which involves one part sand to one part homemade compost to two parts of good potting soil. That all blended together has worked really well for me when growing lavender in containers. 
Now you may be wondering, what sort of light conditions are ideal for lavender? Well, full sun. The more sun, the better. And when it comes to pruning, you know, don't be afraid to cut them back, particularly after they flower and you cut the lavender spikes out. All it does is encourages new growth, which will produce new gorgeous flowers. In keeping with this purple theme, I thought it'd be interesting to answer a viewer question that I hear very often this time of year. The time of year we begin to store away those winter blankets and sweaters. Alan, as I put up my winter wool, how can I protect my clothing from moths? Well, did you know it's actually the larva of a moth that does all of the damage? You see, a female moth has an ability to recognize the scent of wool. She's drawn to it, lays the eggs, then the larvae hatch, and they're the ones that run through your wardrobe munching on your wool. I have to say, I've never met anyone who likes the smell of mothballs. Plus, I don't think they're very good for you. They're certainly not natural. But everyone loves the aroma of lavender. So good. You know, for centuries, we've used herbs as repellents against things like moths. And what you can do with these natural ingredients is actually confuse the moth so that when the female moth comes in to lay her eggs and she begins to look for wool, these aromas confuse her and she moves on. Now, if you'd like an all-natural recipe for creating your own moth repellent, just check out my website. That's plnsmith.com. Now, you know what's interesting is that cedar, which I mentioned in one of the recipes, has such a fantastic aroma. Now, the cedar that we use in pet cages and for moth repellents is actually eastern red cedar. In some of my design work, I lean on western cedar, which is a wonderful building material. These two cedars, what they have in common is durability. They're both weather and insect resistant. Okay, now let's get back to this purple color theme. You know, I want to showcase some of the plants that I've had great success with in my garden, starting with this one called Persian Shield, or Strobilanthes if you want to use its botanical name. I love its metallic looking foliage. It blends beautifully in the border and makes a dramatic addition to containers. Now, if you haven't tried salvias yet, shame on you. There's such a wide range of colors from the lightest blue to the deepest velvety purples. I have to say, there's a salvia for every garden and every gardener. Sometimes we get a little busy and watering slips our mind. That's why I love scovola or fan flower. This variety is called blue shamrock. What's great about these plants, if they go without water for a period of time, they'll bounce back. Just give them a drink and they'll be fine. Now this little plant is called Ageratum and it's a variety called Artist Purple. It's a recent discovery and it's performed beautifully in the summer garden and mixes nicely in containers. And you just can't beat petunias for summer performance. This variety is called Supertunia's Mini Purple and it's a real showstopper. We've touched on the challenges of growing lavender in this show, so what about an alternative? Russian sage is a nice solution. Its tiny lavender flowers bloom on the gray stems of this perennial, giving it an ethereal, ghost-like appearance. Its open, airy quality can bring a softness to the landscape, but I think what I like the most about it is that it's very cold-hardy and easy to grow. For example, when I started with this plant, it was just an awkward, gangly youngster in a container. And just look at how it's responded to one season's growth. Now, Russian sage is relatively easy to find, so look for it. Salvia, Russian sage, Persian shield and fan flower, they're all great performers in my garden. If you'd like a list of some more, just check out my website. That's plnsmith.com. Now, who's up for ice cream? After the break, the recipe for a lavender-flavored treat. Every once in a while, I come across recipes that are really fantastic, and I want to share them with you, such as the case with this recipe called lavender ice cream. And thanks to Chef Paul Novicki at New Cuisine Lounge, the recipe is finally yours to enjoy. Let's take a look. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to start, we're going to start cracking some eggs. And all we really want to do is we want to utilize just the yolk, which is really important. The recipe calls for about uh, 12 eggs. These are large eggs. If you have extra large eggs, you can probably drop down to about nine. And what we're gonna do after the egg, we're gonna whisk in the sugar. It's real important to get all the egg yolks whisked very well. Uh, we're gonna add the sugar to our, to our egg yolks. And we wanna bring air to this. So where this color is really yellow, we wanna whisk this until it becomes almost a white. We also want to add a little body to it. If you don't add body, your ice cream is going to be real hard, real heavy. This kind of makes it real light and creamy. 
You can kind of see how it's already starting to change colors. You just have to be a little diligent. You can do this in a mixer. Uh, you can kind of see it. it goes from that egg yolk color to like a nice white frothy. And that's exactly the kind of color we're looking for. So what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, put that to the side, grab our saucepan, and we're, we have to actually bring, we have to get some cream boiled, but we wanna add some lemon. Now what the lemon zest does, not the pith, the white part, what the lemon zest does, it reduces the, uh, the real heaviness of the, uh, the cream. So what we wanna do now is add just a little bit of vanilla. If you have a vanilla bean, that'd be great, but we have pure vanilla extract. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the cream, add it to the saucepan, bring it to a quick boil, um, so we can add the hot cream and the flavor into the egg mixture itself. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pour a little bit of the cream, actually one quarter cream, into a saucepan, and this will come to a boil. Now you wanna have a soft boil. If it goes all the way, it will froth over and make a tremendous mess. We're gonna flake off a little bit of this dry lavender, and we're gonna gently kind of rub it, this lavender flour, to release all the oils and you can really smell what this ice cream is gonna taste like just because of uh, the aromatics. And once this cream has boiled, we're going to what we call temper the uh, egg mixture with the cream. What temper means is we want to add just a little bit of cream at a time so we don't have scrambled eggs. Very, very important. Now we're gonna strain all these impurities out. Now we're ready to freeze this into our ice cream maker. It just, it'll complement just about anything because it's so light, and so floral. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the show as much as I have. Any of those recipes or ideas in today's show can be found on my website, including Chef Paul's recipe for lavender ice cream. That's pallensmith.com. I hope you'll get out there and jump into that big world of purple and make your garden a more beautiful place. Until next time, from the garden, I'm Alan Smith. In this garden I dream Of a bed of flowers Bluebirds sing Of the beauty all around us And every time the sun comes out I can't help but smile Oh, no, I can't help but smile